Yeah, Dallas. I remember my first day there. The coolest thing was I remember seeing at at night. There's this dust that comes on, and the first time that I walked on the plane or that I walked off the plane into Dallas, you just hit this wall, this this humid just wall. I mean, you can feel it. Like um, the weather there, it's like you're getting cooked from the inside out. It's not. It's not a dry heat. It's a such a humid culture or area and so I remember showing up there and it was I was dying for the first while just because I'm so not used to it and it drains you it really does and um, it's really cool just that um, it, it's different there the whole the whole set of life being from California I was kind of used to you know either you had like the beach weather or this desert side to things and when I show up I mean you have it was like I was in this jungle I don't know if people from the jungle would say that but I felt like there was stuff everywhere and I remember you see my first afternoon there were these fireflies that were coming through I'll call them lightning bugs and um, and yeah it was it was really exciting just seeing all that different stuff that there was to it um, the first area that I started in it was it was famous for it's uh, the, the crime rate in Dallas that was one where the apartment complex that we lived in um, for all the all the pre-mission moms, I don't know if this works, but I remember someone got killed in an apartment that lived like next to us, and so cops said that that we couldn't go in that area, um, or a couple of missionaries before said that they couldn't go in that area, and so there was, I mean, we had people. Um, it was just that was the part where I rolled up and I felt like I was in Mexico. I mean, just people having a gun on them, and I mean, there's a Texas way. People just love guns in Texas, but when it was uh, Hispanics and, and other cultures, when they just had guns on them, it was just kind of, it was a big gang place. They had a lot of gang influence, and so, um, but I remember it as a missionary, a lot of people, whenever we tell them that we were serving at Oak Cliff, if we saw their members, or and I told family, and uh, people just emailed me, they're like, you serious, Oak Cliff? I've heard, you know, X, Y, and Z in this story, and right before I showed up, I think it was Adrian Peterson, the the football player, his brother had just gotten killed there. And I mean, people were shot on a pretty often basis. And so they're like, what's it like? And um, I, just remember, I, I just thought it was cool. I was like, it's, it's, it's like normal life, um, just in a different state. And so you're just, I don't remember being too afraid of anything. As a missionary, you go with this, this whole, um, this whole idea that you're, that you're protected. And I mean, of course you gotta be smart about it. You can't be stupid down there, but um, but yeah, we just, we felt really cool because a lot of people, they really respect you for what you do. And especially since it was such a poor area, um, they were really grateful for what we did. And so when they found out that you were there to help them, that you wanted them to be able to, you know, take part in this message and, uh, they just, they really appreciated the fact that you put it out there. You weren't making them pay. Uh, they, I mean, we'd be knocking on doors all the time and it, it was so often that they just opened it up and they'd say, Oh, uh, the you know the men of God are here just invite them on in come eat dinner with us tell us what you want to say and um, I mean uh, another part of the time you have Dallas they call it the city of churches and so it's um, at, there's churches everywhere they're all over the place for my first transfer I made this goal that I was going to take a picture of every single church that I saw because being from California I remember there were like four churches around my neighborhood and I mean, three of them were LDS churches that I knew of. And so, um, so I remember I was just trying to take a picture of every church and I gave up at about a hundred churches later because we just kept passing them here and there and here and there. And so some people are pretty, they're very into it and, and they don't really like that you're, you're trying to change what they, what they believe. But, um, but for the most part, that's, that's really, you're respected for it. And, and as far as violence goes, it's not like a lot of people protect you from it. They're, they're like, hey, these are these are the men of God. They're you know they're doing what's good, and we're not going to mess with them. And we respect them, and we listen to what they have to say, a lot of the times. And so I remember I loved that. Um, like I said before, Dallas, it's this huge corporate central area. But since we work with Spanish, they were kind of um, they worked in the lower tier of things, and and a lot of it. I mean, you have people working from the aspect of roofing to construction to painting lots of things like that and it was it was tough for us to to help some especially the roofers i felt like that was that was this lifestyle where you just kind of go roofing you're in the hot sun it drains you of everything and so they're once they're done at about four 
um, you know, they go with their buddies to go drinking and, and then come back and it's, it would just lead to problems within the family. And so that was, that was a big thing that we dealt with was, uh, jobs. That was kind of a setback for people a lot of times. But I remember as people would just explain it to us in Mexico, they were just saying compared to what they'd make in Mexico and the, how much work they'd have to do there, where they say, um, they'd always say Mexico where the, where the, where you have to work a lot. What is it? The work is great and the pay is little. And then America, where the work is little and the pay is great. Um, they still, compared to what a lot of us missionaries are used to, for, to come from the States, we're like, man, we're super blessed to see, you know, these people, they're, they're just not, they, they just don't have a lot of the material things that we're used to. But still, they, they think that they're living up on the high end because compared to where they're coming from. And so I remember that was, that was, a, that was a normal day down there as we'd wake up. It's hot as I'll get out, get on the bikes, go around, cruise around. I love knocking doors. I love just stopping and talking to people. That was great because it was in the city, so they were always around and about. And um, and the the food was delicious there. That was kind of that was kind of my hook line that as I learned from other missionaries on how to contact, I'd always just talk to people about food. And once you start talking to them about food, they just they just won't stop talking. They'll invite you over, and and then you can finally get your way in with with uh with religion and and what your real purpose is but i loved it down there and we also we served in this area that it was it was pretty cool i mean historically speaking that was where jfk was shot was in dallas and so we'd always drive by that area they have it marked with this x on the road and so we just always drive by that and the guy that everyone thought i mean i know there's as far as everyone's concerned, there's these huge conspiracies. And, and when I showed up in Dallas, so many people have so many different ideas on um, what was behind the whole JFK shooting. But um, but yeah, there was this theater that we lived pretty close to that was where they think was it Harvey Lee Oswald was the person they thought shot JFK. And so he ran away and he went and hid in this theater. And so we lived right by that. And so, I mean, as, as close as we were to American culture, there was a lot of American stuff that was right next to us. That was kind of central to, um, to the United States. And, and so it was a really good mix, but I never really felt like I was truly at home. I felt like I was always away on some adventure in a different country. It was little Mexico because they always have their shops selling, Luchello masks, the fighter masks, and um, you know soccer jerseys and whatever it is, and um, yeah, that was that was what it was like in Dallas. So I, I really loved it. That was that was my other side of the mission, and I loved it there. It was fantastic. I, I served in another area that was it was north in Oak Cliff. It used to be a really nice white area that was kind of dominated by Caucasians, and and then the whole um, and then later on in history, you have a lot of um, a lot of black people that came in and that and they kind of took over that area and so then the white people they just went north i know it's kind of demographically off but i don't know if that's how you describe it but that was where they went they went up to north dallas that's where all these companies are located and then hispanics came in and took over oak cliff again and so it's predominantly like black and DeSoto and southern areas then you have mexicans and oak cliff or hispanics and then you have a lot of white people up here and that's where a lot of companies started like um, in Plano, that was a really nice area that I was in. I was still serving in Spanish, but there were a lot of people that worked for um, Dr. Pepper. That was, I mean, that company started there. If you look on your cans in, in uh, for Dr. Pepper or whatever, it'll say canned in Plano and a lot of uh, different Coke products and um, just, just big companies. There's these huge, I love the architecture out there because that's always different. They're very artistic about it. As far as the skyline goes, you have this, I think I'm trying to remember they call it like the reunion center or something like that. And it's this big disco ball on a stick. It's like that down there. And then you have the bank of America building the lights up and, um, the chase building. And they're all built differently than, than most of the sky, the skyscrapers that you'd expect. And so it was really interesting. There was all these companies. I served out in another area called Greenville. It's just North of, um, it's just North of, of Dallas. And there's a company, I think it was called L3 up there. And what they did was they, um, I'm trying to remember if I got the name of the company right, but I feel like every member worked for that. And they were a, a aircraft company that they, they designed different things for um, different airplanes, be it, you know, government planes or commercial planes. And a lot of it was, 
it was kind of like pimp my ride for government airplanes as far as stealth, um, different combat things. They worked on Air Force One out there, just as far as security, different modifications. And, and so that was just, that was like kind of why the city was there was because they had this huge thing that employed everyone. And so you had a lot of those different companies that just had lots of people working for them. And that was, that's kind of the draw to Dallas as a, as a business central. As far as transportation is concerned, um, I mean, we were we we're on bikes. You get cars sometime in the mission, but um, a lot of time you have people that they take. It's called darts, the Dallas area rapid transit, and so a lot of people would take that. That was where my favorite contacting was. Was inside that you just you have a bus of full of people, and it's like where are they going to go? And so you just stand up and you just talk to them. And I remember we just talked to buses as, as a group of people. And so a lot of people would use that. Uh, and it was pretty cool because since I served there during, I mean, everyone's getting a little bit more efficient as far as um, how to get to places. They, uh, instead of using gas and everything, they would be pretty, it would be pretty popular to use public transportation. And so that was what a lot of people did. And that was how we made a lot of contacts. So it was really, it was really cool to do that. Um, and then the cost of living, like I say, North, uh, North Dallas, as far as Texas in a whole, it depends on really where you're coming from. But, um, but I remember seeing some of these huge houses out there, they were ginormous. And I mean, you have these three stories, you know, just acres of land. I mean, coming from California, I didn't even know how big an acre of land was. It was like a couple hundred feet with a plot. That's perfect. And so, um, so I'd ask them, I'd be like, how much does it cost to, to, to build this house? And a lot of people, they just they build their own homes there and so or they have someone build it for them and so they were like well it really it kills me to tell you but it's about two hundred fifty thousand dollars and i was like three stories seven acres this whole thing he's like you're kidding me right and um i was just i was blown away because it's so expensive everywhere else but um it still is and i think that's a draw for a lot of why you have so many cultures out there because if you if you want a really big house, it's easy to afford. If you can't afford much, you can still get a decent house out there. So the cost of living isn't too bad. Of course, in, in North Dallas, up in the business central, you have people like George Bush and all these other billionaire people that live up there. Um, and I never saw that area. I was never in that, in that place. But you always see, you know, your Aston Martins and Ferraris cruising down the freeway, just headed up that way. And then you have, you know, Cliff, you just have the small painter trucks and, everything's everything's beat down but i think that that's a real big draw to texas is that it's not is that if it's it's affordable to live there and so that's that's one of the big draws